imagine yourself driving down a windy coastal road, blue emerald sea out your window. You start picturing to yourself in your imagination, walking along the seashore, collecting rocks or shells, maybe wading out into the surf. And then all of a sudden, a horn blares behind you, an engine roars, and that guy zooms around you and cuts you off. And now you're picturing something completely different in your mind to do with those rocks and that water on the seashore with that guy that's now in front of you. Well, have you ever stopped and wondered, why is that? Why do I imagine good things in one moment, and then the very next moment I'm imagining terrible, horrible, no good, very bad things? Why do I feel sometimes like Smeagol in The Lord of the Rings, imagining a tasty fish or helping catch a nice rabbit for stew, and then at other times more like Gollum, constantly seeking what I consider most precious? Well, St. Paul tells us in Romans 7, and the reason is that in this life, from the moment you're baptized until the moment Christ returns or we die, we live as saints and sinners. And as sinner saints, everything that we do or say, think, even imagine, we do and we say and we think and we imagine as sinner saints. Listen to how St. Paul wrestled with this as a Christian in Romans 7. I know that nothing good dwells in me, that is, in my flesh, for I have the desire to do what is good, but not the ability to carry it out. For I do not do the good that I want, but the evil that I do not want to do, well, that's what I keep on doing. Wretched man that I am, who will deliver me with this body of death? Well, thanks be to God, who gives me the victory in Jesus Christ our Lord. You see, like St. Paul, we are sinner saints with sinner saint imaginations. And this is why we picture or imagine things in our minds that are at one time good and true and beautiful. And then in the very next moment, we have imaginations and thoughts that run through our imaginations of things that are evil and false and ugly, or in the words of Scripture, sin and death. So where's our help as sinner saints with sinner saint imaginations? Well, it's not in our own imaginations, that's for sure, but in Christ, who is the image of the invisible God. Paul says that in Colossians. As sinner saints with sinner saint imaginations, our rescue is found in God who comes to rescue us, in him who became incarnate for you. Not in our imaginations, but him who took on flesh. Not in our flesh, but him who became man for you. In Jesus, in his word, in his perfect life lived for you, in his perfect death laid down for you, in his glorious resurrection. In God's gift of baptism, where he brings all of that that he did for you to you, God's gift of your imagination is also rescued and baptized so that your imagination and you with your imagination are forgiven when you use it for sinful purposes. Or, on the other hand, when you are blessed by God's grace to use your imagination to do good things too. Both the forgiveness and God's good things that he gives you to do with your imagination, they're all his gift. And greater forgiveness he gives you than you could ever possibly imagine. But that's a story for next time. And so, next time we'll do that. We'll learn a little bit more about who we are as God's baptized people, as story listeners who use God's gift of the imagination to read and to hear his word. Until then, rest in the totally sufficient, imputed righteousness of Christ.